Nicole Laframboise is IMF Mission Chief for Haiti. Welcome. Thank you. So, um, before we get started, uh, IMF is kind of like this mythical economic creature for, for many, and a lot of people know that it looms large, but yet don't really know what it does. So if you could take a, a moment and just explain what IMF's role is in Haiti, and specifically what your, what your office does in Haiti. Okay, the easiest way to describe the IMF to the layperson that doesn't know the ins and outs is it's really like a credit union for countries. And so countries around the world put in a deposit and they become a shareholder. And with that, they have, um, you know, they have rights and obligations. And, and one of their rights is their ability to, um, to borrow. Uh, but all members who are um, country members also get policy advice. Um, they, they, their economies are subject to an annual review. And um, they have to provide a certain amount of data. So there's, there's a, there's, uh, those types of um, requirements. And so that's sort of the, the big picture of, uh, of <laughs> the IMF. In terms of um, what we do or what, what do I do, um, I work in a regional department. So there are five regional departments covering the regions of the world. I work in, it's called the Western Hemisphere Department. I'm the division chief for one of the Caribbean divisions. And in terms of the work with Haiti, I'm on the head of the team of about five people who work on the country. And what do we do? We, we um, provide policy advice and analytical advice, uh, and we review economic developments, um, financial developments, uh, and we provide um, technical advice and policy advice in terms of how to manage the economy. Mm -hmm. uh, and we do that on an ongoing basis. Um, and then we also, uh, provide technical assistance. My team doesn't do that, but the IMF does that. And that's basically expert advice to build capacity and institutions in, institutions in the country. And that's in the areas of budget, tax policy, um, monetary policy, financial sector regulation, all of sort of the big macro uh, topics. Mm -hmm. So it's lending, but with a lot of on hand, hands-on help as yes. you go along, yes. right? There's also, um, Countries, not all countries borrow from the IMF. A country like, um, you know, middle or higher income countries that don't have a balance of payments like external funding need, but they would still require, requ um, they would still get an annual review by IMF staff, including, for example, the US or Canada. It's called an Article 4 consultation. Uh, and it's sort of like an audit isn't really the right word, but it's where we would look at their entire sort of macroeconomy and financial sector. Uh, and do an analysis and, and also a critique of their economic policies. And then those reports that are prepared by the staff go to the IMF Executive Board, uh, which is the representation of all the members of the of member countries, and they do a, like a peer review. And so that's sort of <laughs> how the IMF works. Same thing happens for very you know, lower income countries like Haiti. Um, although often lower income countries want to borrow funds from the IMF. And when they do that, um, we have different instruments, but basically they're accompanied by a supporting economic program. So, you know, where they set, we set objectives and targets with the authorities to help them achieve their objectives, which are basically st stabilizing the economy and increasing growth, et cetera. And so at, at these meetings that I'm sure you've been attending so far, one of the big themes has been these, these sort of convergence of a lot of different crises, right? We had the pandemic, and now of course, then we have supply chain crises. And then of course, we've got you know, the, the war in Ukraine, which is restricting supply and food, et cetera. Mm. And, and I know that of course, Haiti is, is no stranger to compounding crises. Mm. I'm wondering how the economy in Haiti right now is handling this, and, and where is it feeling the strains mm. of the current global situation? Yeah, um, okay, well, <laughs> this is a tough one. Certainly, this, this, this global shock being the war is the latest. I mean, but the country has, I think, let's just say, probably been hit by five huge shocks in the last few years. Um, it, it has, um, the, the, this current war is, 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 a, is a big problem for Haiti because uh, it won't hit it directly in terms of trade or anything, but 
increase in the price of commodities and food and fuel, all of, a lot of which are imported into the economy, will have a big impact on the economy. And of course, when you have a, a country like Haiti where a quarter of the population is under $1.90 a day and 60% is under the national poverty line, a big chunk of their consumption basket is food. And so when food prices going up 40% globally or whatever, uh, that is extremely difficult for the poor. And, mm -hmm. and so a country like Haiti, a lot of those countries, you would have heard this is a huge shock for them. Uh, and then um, the, the country also recently had a natural disaster. So it's very susceptible to natural disasters, either hurricanes or um, earthquakes. Had an earthquake last year. Um, and then, of course, uh, it, it had the shock of the pandemic. Um, interestingly, it, it didn't suffer directly that much by, from COVID because it didn't really spread as much as in other parts of the world. Sort of a little bit what happened in Haiti. I'm not 100% sure why. Uh, the reported cases. Also, it, it has a very small tourism sector, and so it wasn't really affected that much. It's true that exports did hurt uh, did suffer, they declined a lot in the first year, but at the same time, they benefited from a huge increase in um, what we call workers' remittances, which are basically transfers from the di diaspora uh, living abroad. They send cash home. Mm -hmm. And so in some ways on paper, it didn't suffer as much as other parts of the world. But it's still a shock because um, it, it had an indirect uh, impact. Um, I guess um, the the those are sort of the, the, the current shocks. I mean, though it has to be said that probably the biggest shock in Haiti now and over the last three or four years is the basically homegrown, unfortunate political instability. Um, and that has had a, a, a significant impact on economic activity and the ability of the country to implement and the government to implement good policies. Uh, yeah, it was good. Actually, that was going to be my next question. Oh, okay. Given, but I, I think that building upon that, if you could just expound a little bit, and how hard is it then to do your job as you're trying to institute reforms that get the country back on track with the political instability right now? How hard is it for you to do your job? Mm, it's hard. <laughs> it's hard for them, and it's hard. It's hard for us. Um, you know, well. I mean, we, we're, we're an institution that exists for its members to try to support them in their objectives. Um, maybe I could talk a little bit about just the sort of economic situation because that will help me sort of explain a little bit about the, the task that we have. Um, you know, you've had, because of this sort of protracted political crisis um, since, since basically 2016, but particularly in the last few years, um, you've had, and then of these international shocks, you've had three years of contraction in the economy. So, um, uh, and that means that real incomes for the population are, have been just going down. And complete, almost um, halt in, in, in investment, public and private. Uh, and so the co productive capacity of the country is, is not increasing and you have the population increasing. Um, and, and so that's basically what, what we're starting with. Um, and unfortunately, uh, inflation is now high because, uh, partially because of the, the shock um, that's being imported inflation with higher food prices, but also the government um, has uh, insufficient sources of financing f of its deficit. It doesn't have a huge deficit, but it doesn't have any ways to finance it. It, it can't borrow abroad. Uh, it, it used to get a lot of external assistance but until this political crisis, that sort of dried up because uh, international donors are hesitant to support um, the fact that there isn't an, an elected government or whatever. Mm -hmm. And so without any sources of financing, um, countries are required or are sort of forced to um, have the central bank finance the needs of the government. And in economic terms, that's basically almost the same as printing money, which leads to inflation puts pressure on the exchange rate uh, and, the, and, and then more inflation, higher deficit. So it's kind of like a vicious circle. And so that's the situation they've been in for a couple of years and they are working hard to, to manage that. And I think actually they've done a pretty good job considering the circumstances were so difficult. Um, 
but it, it is a very challenging for policymakers and for us to assist them in this environment. Um, I mean, the, I guess so economic policy is really often is just picking the least worst option. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and without an actual stable government, um, you know, putting in place economic reforms is, is very difficult. Uh, and so you have some technocrats which are running the government and doing a, a, a very good job under difficult circumstances. And in the fact, they don't really have a political mandate to do difficult reforms. And so we try in that context to help them uh, at the technical level, you know, sort of um, uh, make decisions that will help to restore some kind of economic stability. So um, improve the budget out prospects, try to mobilize revenues more. Um, but we put a, lately a lot of focus on governance improvements. Um, in basically improving accountability and the use of public resources. This is something that's suffered a lot uh, in, in, in a lot of countries, but particularly in a country with undergoing a political crisis. Nicole Laframboise, thank you so much for no joining problem. us. I hope that was helpful. Very. Thank you.